Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, SF Indie Fest. Um, glad to have you here. Um, you know, when we first started this uh, film festival 23, 24 years ago, um, I don't think our founder ever uh, thought that we would ever be hosting um, a virtual film festival, but I guess the future is here and the pandemic has required it. Um, and in the end, what we're really trying to do is get uh, really interesting independent films in front of you as an audience and uh, kind of uh, let you kind of immerse it. And so uh, today we're lucky enough to have uh, some of the team behind Itchy Fingers. Um, thanks again for being here, guys. Uh, so we have uh, Anna Nillis and Marco Jake, uh, the directors of the film, and uh, the star of the show, uh, Zach Schultz. So thanks again for being here. Um, so I have to, uh, maybe a good place to kind of uh, start things off is, um, you know, you know, Anna and Marco, how did you kind of come up for this idea? And as you were developing it, how did you kind of figure out that kind of tricky balance of tone? Good, I like the tone question. Um, so as far as coming up with the idea, we were both really chewing on a lot of different themes within the movie. Um, kind of separately with, you know, uh, media and the internet and clowns and comedy and, um, the theater world yeah. and sort of, um, people being miscast and sort of, uh, that line between very intense directing and sort of abuse. psychological abuse and manipulation, uh, and yeah, so that all these things sort of started to entangle themselves. Um, and the tone part of part of your question is the truth is like it was tricky and it's something that um, I would say like slowed us down uh, in terms of once we kind of had a script, we we still weren't sure exactly like how how to make it almost because it did feel like a really tricky kind of balance act to kind of figure out. Like it was never, um, it was I was constantly evolving. Like we, we wrote a draft of the script and we kind of went to pre-production, um, but we were constantly editing. Um, and we kind of are big believers in that, like you get to write a movie three times, so if you write it, when you write it and then you write it when you're directing it and then you totally rewrite it in the editing room. So um, if you were to look at the initial script versus, you know, our, our shooting draft versus our rough cut versus what you see, you know, in this festival, it's like wildly different. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and I have to say, I mean, then you guys can all three maybe speak po. It's like, obviously there's kind of a great blueprint there and the writing and your directing and things, but you know, um, it just like, you know, with your performance, Zach, it just kind of really um, helps kind of capture some of the nuance, I think, to the story. And so like, what was the process for all three of you connecting? And um, I don't know if you auditioned or if you guys were friends, but like, you know, when you're first reading for this role, like, what did you think? And what was your kind of interpretation? Uh, well, it was a real meet cute. Uh <laughs> I, I had seen, I was, I was straight out of acting school and I had seen an ad on backstage for the audition. I was living in Louisville, Kentucky at the time and they were looking for Chicago local actors, but I was like, I'll go audition anyway. And I took a bus, an eight hour bus ride up to Chicago, um, did the audition and then they let, they sent me the script and I just was blown away by it. I loved it. And uh, we got involved and it was great. Nice. And so we, uh, where did most of the filming take place? Was it shot in Chicago or elsewhere? Or? Yeah, it was It was shot. Um, the apartment that they're in is actually our apartment in Chicago. And uh, the theater was in a suburb right outside Chicago in Oak Park. Okay. And so, so uh, like, do you guys, are you, were you all uh, kind of pretty involved in kind of a theater community in your own communities? So in the sense that... Um, this kind of setting was pretty um, kind of the heart of soul things that you were familiar with? For me, totally. um, I, <laughs> Yeah, we, we um, ourselves are not like directly involved with theater. Um, oh, unstable. Um, but 
uh, good, good friends of ours through, you know, the different theater conservatories um, in Chicago uh, would, you know, share stories of, you know, different theater experiences, different rehearsal experiences and monomaniacal directors. And um, so we would tap into a lot of, or tried to tap into a lot of those experiences. Yeah. And what was it about the role that, you know, obviously it's always neat to kind of be able to kind of make a film and work with other kind of creative collaborators, but was there something about this role that kind of struck you that, you know, made it an interesting challenge or? Um, well, it, it's, it's kind of very similar, the character to who I am as a person. Um, it was dealing with the frustrations that I have in my own profession where I am very serious about doing comedy. Um, I love making people laugh and that's something very serious. I take very seriously. Um, and I had experienced a lot of frustration with having to settle for drama and all this like strange mentality. Um, and I know the struggle of like having that battle inside of yourself saying, I really have this longing to do this one thing, but I have this expectation to do the other. So, so uh, I felt like I would be able to use that frustration that I had like in my own life. Um, and it just kind of the role itself kind of spoke to me in that way. Nice. And when you guys were kind of um, developing the script and uh, sharing it um, in and Marco, like did, were people wondering about what you wanted to do in the sense of like, whether they thought it was a little bit more of a serious drama or, you know, once you have the idea of like a school shooter, you know, did you get any sort of pushback, I guess, of people that? You know, we kind of kept anticipating, you know, especially in some of the early drafts of like, you know, I remember writing that scene um, when, when they're all together and they're fighting about who gets to be the shooter. I remember writing that and like blushing because it made me so uncomfortable and trying to imagine like, how are we gonna like pitch this to actors or, or um, like, are we walking a line? Will someone tell us if this is really fucked up? Um, and I think, uh, you know, we just kept trying to like say, okay, what, what trying to be very conscious about um, you know, always trying to think of how this could be hurting people, how, you know, what are different opinions that could, you know, coalesce around this movie. Um, and then just always trying to listen, but nobody who we worked with, you know. No, no one stopped us. No one stopped us. Um, <laughs> I will say though that um, the biggest thing I sort of noticed from people who read the script versus kind of, uh, those who were later involved in the making of the movie or actors in the movie or people that we're still in touch with is Ernie in the script. Um, a lot of people like really didn't, the biggest problem seemed to pe be that people didn't like him at all. And they were wondering like how, like this, how are we gonna sympathize with this kid? I, I'm so- He's annoying. He's annoying and he's cringy. And we were like, felt strongly that um, he needed to be those things, but in somehow a, a sort of lovable way. And that's when Zach took a bus and <laughs> walked into the door. And within, you know, 30 seconds, our minds were kind of like blown because we're like, this is, this You're is. You're on his side, you know? Yeah, um, even when he's, when in these early read throughs, Zach was, you know, there are some very, very obnoxious things um that we had this character say and like he was reading them and i just kept feeling like zach like i'm on your side you're lovable like this is yeah. really exciting um yeah so that so zach zach really deserves some credit there <laughs> all the credit and once yeah. we and once we once we were working on it with zach is when the character really kind of we were like, okay, now we've got, now we can make this basically um, because we found, we found the person who, who's going to be the heart. And can bring the nuance to the, yeah. that mm. kind of thing. How do you think, I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you, you know, feel that like kind of making, you know, a film, you know, <laughs> <laughs> 
how do you feel like in being like you know filmmakers based in the Midwest and like okay, filming in the Midwest and you being from Kentucky, Zach? Like, how do you think that kind of ethos affected the sort of film that you made? I, I say this as a programmer in the sense that we we have a lot of independent narrative films that kind of come from LA or New York, you know, and a lot of great or interesting films, you know, but um, there is, you know, kind of um, these kind of building blocks that you get kind of familiar with. And so there's kind of a different vibe, I think, um, with your guys' film and something that's special just to what you all bring it to it, but it seems also maybe, you know, the setting kind of affects things. And so how do you think, you know, filming in Chicago and just being, you know, making an independent film in the Midwest, which is you know, must be different than making one in LA, you know, how do you think it's different and how do you think it kind of changes what we see on screen in the story? That's a, I, a wonderful question um, that I think about a lot. Uh, I really love being in Chicago, um, primarily as a filmmaker because most of the people you meet don't make films or aren't involved in that industry at all. Um, and I think that really lends itself to just just different, you, you don't form bad habits because you're not around, you know, people who can give you bad habits. You know, you kind of have to do things on your own um, or always kind of feel like the underdog because you're not, you know, in this big industry. Um, and I think, you know, I think Chicago just, weather i'm a big fan of weather <laughs> <laughs> there's a i mean i think my take on it would be that there's both sometimes a sense of loneliness um in, in you know being the flip side experience of of sort of that sense of oh there's not just everyone we know isn't currently making a movie or working on a screenplay but at the same time there is a sense of space and you know um, like we're like we're not uh, we're just able to jump on the train and start shooting. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> for most people, like all if most people if we're like, hey, do you want to move and be in this shot? Like people will go for it because it's still sort of not an everyday thing. The other main thing, honestly, is like there's so many incredible actors yeah. who are mostly in the theater world um and yeah so the ability to just i mean we we felt like at, at all the actors in the group in the theater group in the film were just so like wonderful and we ended up having cut so much footage of just um every single person just like having these great moments and and bringing these interesting things uh and that just comes from being able to work with people from some of them were, you know, professionals. Some of them were just out of school. Some of them had never been in a movie before. Some of them were really um, great improvisers. Um, and then so getting to work with a bunch of different types of actors mm. was a wonderful experience. Um, yeah. And most of them, it was their first feature film or some first time acting on film at all. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, I think the biggest, you know, and as um, I think when, when we feel a, a deficit of talent to work with, maybe we'll move, but for right now, we're <laughs> yeah. overflowing. And how about, uh, like you mentioned, you recently graduated from school. Had you done much um, acting work in front of the camera or? Um... This was my first um, film, short or feature length. Uh, I had gone to a school that focused primarily on film performance so i had ex some experience with like a camera in my face but i had never been on a professional movie movie set um but yeah i was i was out of school and i was looking for my like first thing to do and i feel so incredibly lucky that this was it and uh i love what i got to create so that's that yeah well it seems like there's a lot of serendipity involved uh you know in the film like there's a good base and then a lot of uh, cool things happened. Um, may, uh, you, know, um, you know, often when we think of uh, filmmaking, we think of, you know, many people kind of think of, uh, you know, this kind of solo director, this auteur with this kind of vision. And obviously you all are um, a team. Um, how, um, how did you all decide to kind of work together 
to make this film and what is it like working with a co-director and how do you think that changes the process? It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, I, I think, you know, we kind of started writing, we write very separately and then we kind of, you know, push them together. Um, but I think at the super low budget that we're looking, working at, it's a huge advantage to have, you know, just energy wise, motivation wise to have two, a two headed monster um, at every part of the process, whether it's, you know, we're shooting and we had, a, you know, couldn't get the blood special effects right. And I'm sitting on the floor crying. And so, you know, Marco's getting the crew settled up while I have my breakdown and then we can flip. And then the next day he can have his breakdown and I can drive for a while. And um, yeah, especially through the editing, like editing took us a year. Yeah. Um, and it was, it definitely really good to be able to like, you know, one of us takes the big, you know, hacks through all the footage and then the next person comes in. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of currently can't imagine doing doing that by myself right now. But I'm sure there's like big problems with, you know, fighting over, <laughs> we have big fights over like font choices oh, and font. like screen <laughs> about fonts. Um, but for now, like the, the important things where we agree on, the aesthetic things we agree on, the story things we agree on, and we'll see. And, you know, uh, for all three of you, like, what was the production like? I mean, in the sense, I think sometimes people are always kind of curious. I mean, like, you know, how many days or weeks did you guys film? And did you just kind of do it back to back? Like, Zach, you moved up to Chicago and, you know, you did it over a couple of weeks. Or how did, the, what, how did this particular independent film, you know, get made? Uh, so it was, it was in the winter. Um <laughs> You guys did say you like weather, you know? Yeah, I know. It, she said she likes weather. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so basically we did Zach. Everyone else was actually local. And Zach, um, Zach moved up for how long was it, Zach? Like a month? I technically, so I had, I, my sister lived in Chicago. I live in Chicago now, but my sister lived in Chicago at the time, and I had stayed with her for the whole month of December, just because I had to be up there for like casting and different yeah. sort of things like that, like that. And then we shot uh, like all of January and then like maybe the first couple of days of February. Um, yeah. But after December, the housing situation with my sister like completely fell through and uh, Anna and Marco came in clutch and got me a place to stay. And it was a wonderful. Yeah, we, we, we figured it out. But uh, yeah, we, we basically rented that theater space for two, two weeks. full weeks yeah. and shot, I think we had like one day where we had like a break in the middle. Yeah. Um, but otherwise we were just shooting the entire time. Um, and, you know, one of the challenges of working with a lot of uh, theater actors is that they're always doing something. So about half the cast was currently in rehearsals or shows for other plays that we're doing. Well, and the catch being that we, you know, we didn't have the budget to pay them a proper salary. So we said, you know, you'll, you, you keep all the work that you're doing will work around your schedule. Um, so we ended up kind of having like, you know, there are some days when, when, you know, we do one person's coverage, move the camera, that person has to leave and another person comes in. Um, so it was it was really chaotic, um, but really fun. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was two weeks, and then we had I think one full week with Dad and Ernie in the apartment, and then I think another week of just Zach and all of his solo stuff. Um, and then we yeah, and then a couple other days of outside stuff in other locations here yeah. and there. But it was probably ended up being like. Like three weeks. Yeah, yeah, like maybe even close to 20 days. Yeah. 19, 20 days altogether. Um, yeah. And, and, and there's a lot like, you know. My hands are sweating just like <laughs> The first cut of the film was like two and a half hours long because we had, there were just a lot of scenes that we ended up either trimming weight 
lay down or or having to cut all together. So we we definitely did a lot of shooting and Zach particularly because Zach is in every single scene in the oh, movie. Wow, yeah. um, uh, you know, we had some some long days, but it was <laughs> it's it's it was fun thinking back on it. <laughs> Okay, and now we're back live. Okay, oh, cool. God. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just talking about timing. Thanks for sticking in there, everybody. Well, you know, as we get kind of close to wrapping up, like, you know, um, you know, a lot of uh, the people that, um, you know, attend and kind of watch our films um, see a lot of independent, uh, you know, films and appreciate, but like, we often often have like kind of uh, people that are kind of up and coming filmmakers watching. Like, what um, kind of words of advice do you think you would leave um, somebody if they were kind of making their first independent film or starting in their first film of just a kind of a mindset to take? Hmm. Well, acting wise, I would say uh, take it seriously, but enjoy it. Make sure if you're not loving it, what's the point? <laughs> You know, if you're not having a good time. I would yeah, say... Yeah, I think that's a oh, good one to always keep in mind. <laughs> uh, I would say, um, real, you know, work with people that this is the most exciting thing for that they're going to do. Because um, that makes the experience so much fun. If, you know, so much of independent filmmaking is so stressful and you hear no so many times um and just things fall apart and i think the best part that i can ever remember is is when you were working with people who are just so amped to be there um and i think that makes everybody's experience better it makes everyone's performance better um and it makes all the memories better so yeah and yeah, yeah, what's the yeah. a... go ahead go ahead marco I was just gonna agree that like the the people that you work with are the most are the most exciting thing and like you don't you don't need as much money as you think you do um, if if you have a small group of people who are all just like want it want to do it um, and part of you know we basically we booked that theater before we had cast anyone. Um, because yeah. we got to this point where we're like, all right, we're, the, the, the script is far enough. We're going to make the movie. Let's, now we just got to find the people. And, um, so yeah, like just, just find your, find your crew, find your band and, and just make it. <laughs> nice. And so what's, um, next, uh, for, uh, the film and also what you guys have coming up in the sense that. What's the best way for people to follow you and kind of track the film and also the next piece of, um, you know, art that, you know, any of you create? Um, so we are, we're going to hopefully continue our festival run for Itchy Fingers, um, you know, through this upcoming year. Hopefully we'll get to show someplace in person at some <laughs> point. Um, but you can follow that on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I think it's Itchy Fingers Film. And then we're currently writing two scripts um, that hopefully will get done by the spring, knock on wood. And uh, who knows? Yeah. I imagine the pandemic's good for writing. You would, one would think, but yeah, not so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best on that. And how about you, Zach? What are you up to? Uh, I've been kind of dipping my toe in a little bit of writing. Um, I'm working on a short film with one of my friends, uh, but I'm always looking for acting work, a little shameless self-promotion. Uh, <laughs> find me on Instagram, none of your concern. None is spelled like a religious nun, N-U-N. <laughs> yeah, Zachary Schultz on Facebook too. <laughs> Again, yeah, take the opportunity. <laughs> hey, and, and now based in Chicago and willing to take a bus anywhere. Anywhere, I swear by it. I did it in New York in February. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a commercial now, I apologize. 
Well, thanks again, guys, for uh, sharing um, the special film with us. Um, really enjoyed it and kind of excited to see where it gets out in the world. And, of course, share it, continue to share it here in San Francisco as part of SF Indie Fest. So uh, have a great day. Thank you. Um, Thank you.